Hello and welcome to um, what hopefully will be a series of videos um, to help you learn how to use Desmos to make uh, uh, some pretty cool animated things. So we're going to start from the basics and uh, um, you know how Desmos can graph any function. Um, I'm going to put in the function in this case, I'm going to put it in as g of x is equal to sine of x. Um, and to no surprise, then you get all the solutions to that equation plotted along the sine wave. Um, that's not what we're going to use for animations, but uh, uh, to demonstrate what I've done is um, I've made uh, a point, and this is uh, a, basically the way Desmos deals with parametrics. Uh, we have the coordinates of a point as changeable expressions. So the x value is going to be a, and the y value will be g of a, where g of x is the sine of x. So um, if I activate that, you can see what's happened right now is I have a red point at 0, 0. The reason is because my slider says a is equal to zero, and the sine of zero is zero, so I get a point at zero, zero. Now, if I let a equal one, then I have the position one second later. So one second, or one unit of time, or one x later, I'm one over, and then the sine of one is about, uh, well, whatever it is, it's, uh, let's see here. Uh, 0 0.841 is the sine of 1. And if we let the a value continuously move, then we're following that point over time. So basically, we can follow whatever function we want by typing in the function here and then typing in the coordinates of that point, and we can watch the point move across the line. Interestingly enough, we can also make a negative, and what that's going to do is reverse time. So we're going to go back in time just like this. Now we're going back through the sine wave. What else is fun about this is you can reverse the coordinates. So here, instead of a, g of a, I write g of a, a. If you know your math, you know that that's going to produce an inverse. So instead of going across the page from left to right, we're going to go up the page from bottom to top, as you see. So now this green point is following the sine wave as if the x-axis were the y-axis. And of course, you can reverse time and make the green dot go downhill just by making the A negative. Uh, so that's a handy little trick. And now we got points flying over a sine wave. The other great thing about this, as I might have indicated, is you can uh, make g of x anything you want. So for example, we can turn the sine of x into tangent of x. And now the points are going to follow tangents and inverse tangents across the page. In fact, we could even get rid of this and just watch the points themselves fly around. Um, I can make these exponential growth curves if I want to. And that would look like this, like an exponential growth curve. So one of them is going to follow the point backwards, and the other one is going to follow the inverse backwards. And then, we, again, we can reverse the direction by making A a positive again. So now we're... So here we have uh, 2 to the x function, and here we have the log base 2 of x. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to put it back to sine, though, because uh, that's the most fun. It has that oscillating tendency uh, or behavior. So um, anyway, now that I have all that sorted out, I'm going to unhighlight uh, each of those moving points, and I'm going to, uh, at least for fun, I'll leave this up while it's going. Um, I want to point out that I've drawn a function. In this case, I've drawn a semicircle as a function, um, and what I've done is I've restricted the, um, I don't even know, why, oh, I know why I had to. Never mind about the restrictions in this case. It's going to go from negative 2 to 2 regardless of what I do. But anyway, I write f of x equals whatever function I want, and I can put in any restrictions I want as well here. Um, here, like I said, I only wanted x to be between 2 and negative 2. I can make those restrictions whatever I want. But I'm going to unhighlight that function, and instead, I'm going to graph f of x plus a negative a. Actually, let's just make this x minus a. So f of x minus a plus g of a. Remember, g of a is going to be a constant. a is going to be a constant. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that function. Again, I'll bring that up. And I'm going to have it move according to a, the sine wave. So watch what happens. Boom. So now that semicircle is floating across the screen. So instead of having 
uh, point float across the screen, we can make a semicircle point across the screen. And again, if I want to make it follow a different shape, I could just program in a different function, and it, the semicircle will follow that path. Again, if I wanted to uh, invert that, I could um, just by um, switching around the g of a and the a. So really what you look at here is this is x minus h plus k. It's the vertex of or the center of whatever shape you're moving is going to be a g of a, which is exactly the same as the coordinates of the point that I moved across. So the lesson I can learn here is if I have a parametric to make a point move across the screen, I just have to put those parametrics in as transformations of whatever shape I want, and the entirety of the shape will move according to those rules. You could even uh, add multiple shapes to go across. What I did here is I have another function, a black semicircle, which is shifted two to the right. So basically all my A values are two seconds faster than the A values from the earlier function. Um, so you can add as many of those as you like and uh, have a variety of uh, shapes chasing each other as they bounce happily across the screen. All right, that's the first video. Um, in the next video, I'll talk to you about another kind of parametric equations. Using A gives us the opportunity um, to have a single point or a whole graph fly across the screen. Using T gives us the opportunity to draw a portion of a graph. So it's a slightly different application of parametrics in Desmos. Thanks for watching.